it's always like that, huh? I have to go back. Hey guys, and welcome to my channel. Um, today, I just wanted to let you know that this is my birthday month and I have a few things I want to plan. I'm thinking about my Instagram in terms of like what am I gonna post for my birthday everyone I know it's not that much of a big deal for everyone but for me it is I've planned a few things for myself like a nice gift to myself for the end of the month but my birthday is in the middle of the month which is like the 15th I almost forgot my birthday but it's on the 15th of August I just want to post something on the day and um, while I wait for the end of the month to go and do my little cute thing. At the end of the month, I will be vlogging with my sister and my cute little nephew. And we're going to be going to a very cute, I don't want to call it a resort, but it's called a lagoon in the middle of Pretoria. It's random as hell. As you know, Pretoria is nowhere near the ocean, but it is depicted as if the backyard is your ocean. Insert picture here. So, just the idea of just going to a place where it's so, like, random. The only place I know that it's an artificial water land kind of thing is, I'm going to say Monty because, you know, is Sun City. So, I didn't want to go to Sun City, um, but I wanted to go somewhere different. I just want to feel like we in summer and spring, you know, I'm obsessed with summer and spring. And I just decided to research and then voila, I found the lagoon in Pretoria. Pretoria is known to be hotter than Midrand or Johannesburg or whatever. So um, I'm just, I just thought why not? You know, I don't want to go somewhere super far because I have a lot of uh, things to do. I have stores to fill and clients orders to fulfill. So I don't really have time to leave the country or anything like that. That's why I thought Pretoria would be perfect. Anyway, so I've decided to create at least three cute pictures. I have a vision of holding uh, balloons, floating balloons with helium, uh, making like a cute photo shoot. And I want to create a, such a cute top that I've been seeing on Instagram lately. I think it was created by the designer TLZ uh, Femi. So I don't know how to really say her whole designer name, but I saw it on her Instagram. I also saw a few other people. It said picture here or here. And um, I just decided to make my own. Like, why not? She is known to being mad about people stealing her designs, but come on, it's a photo shoot, okay? And it's gonna take forever, and I need to take photos like tomorrow, because the next day is my birthday. So I just thought, I'm just gonna make it myself. It doesn't look hard at all. It's just for Instagram purposes. I would love to have something like very extravagant over the top area, but then at the same time, you know, very, you know, glamorous. Over the top and glamorous are low key the same thing. But yeah, just glamorous and over the top and pretty and like, yay, 25, even though I'm celebrating at the end of the month. You know, anything for the gram. This is basically how you make an inspired look by TLZ Femi. The fabrics I'm using, I'm using, I don't know, I forgot the name of this damn fabric, Organza. I'm using Organza and then with for the lining, I'm just using uh, Point the Roma, uh, which is also known as Pointy. Um, and also you can get a similar fabric, which is like scuba fabric, but I feel like that's too scuba-y, if that makes sense. But I'm gonna use Point the Roma for the, the lining. So I hope you enjoy and also make sure to subscribe. I do vlog and all that stuff so you can actually get to see my birthday, how it, it unravels and becomes one. So yeah, let's get started now. The Point de Roma and Organza are the two fabrics you will need to create the stunning tutu top. The Organza is pretty transparent and would need to be tested of its density by gathering it up together. I decided to use my favorite tube top as a pattern template for this bodice of the top. I took the Point de Roma fabric and folded it an eighth of the yard or meter to create the front and back bodice.
by using my tube top as a pattern template. I estimated more or less 4 inches as the length of the bodice. I then used the same measurements for the sleeve. When identifying the fabric of the organza, I noticed the weft unraveled a lot, which made me realize that it would need to be prevented using one of two of these methods. Method one is the roll hem method, which tucks in the edges within the fabric. Or method two is the fold in half method, which the edges are made as the seam allowance and is personally my aesthetical preference for this project. With the fold in half method, the fabric becomes much fuller and provides more coverage when gathered while creating a neat finish. I then measured eight inches down the salvage of the fabric and cut across along the weft to create a strip of fabric using weights to hold the fabric in place while I do so. I then took the rest of the fabric and folded it salvage to salvage four times to create a slimmer width in order to allow easier cutting when replicating the initial strip to create its uniformity. I then repeated the process with the help of weights put onto the fabric. When sewing, I folded one of the strips in half to its desired finishing where the edges are now the seam allowances. By changing the stitch length to 5, I base stitched the edge approximately 3 eighths of an inch then another base stitch quarter of an inch away from the first stitch creating a rail like stitch pattern. I then repeated the process onto the other strips created. After base stitching the edges of all the strips, I take the two top threads and pull them to create gathers, similar to how you would create a curtain. While pulling, you may notice how the threads get longer and the fabric gets shorter, creating fullness, which is exactly what we want to achieve. I then repeat the gathering step on the other strips. Gathering sometimes doesn't flow easily. You may end up with some threads popping, causing ungathered areas such as these. As well as, you may notice how intense the unraveling of the weft of the fabrics become more pronounced during the process. When the threads pop in the center of the gathers, do your best to prevent unravelings of the other gathers by pulling the threads closer to the gathers. Once all strips are gathered, it is time to start placing them onto the bodice lining. When placing the gathered organza onto the pointy lining, Start at the top or bottom edge of the bodice. Then sew the next row of gathers across the center of the bodice, leaving a generous gap between the two gathered fabrics. For the sleeves lining, do the same thing as the bodice and attach the gathers at the top and bottom edge of the lining. To make a neat finish, fold the seam allowance inwards and sew it down. This is how the inside of the sleeve will look. After sewing the top and bottom edge of the sleeves, 
We need to add another gather across the center to fill in the leftover gap. as well as complete the front bodice edge with the additional gathered fabric. Basically, both bodice and sleeves will have three sewn lines across with the gathers as shown on this diagram. Afterwards, sew down the sides of the gathers down to make the combining of the front and back bodice simple and easy without any distraction. Here is a diagram of what I mean. We will be sewing two vertical lines on both sides of the bodice and sleeve lining, folding the ruffles towards the center to cover the gaps more effectively. We will then need to cut off the excess fabric of the seam allowance on both sides. To complete the sleeves, fold the sides together and sew roughly around half an inch. Okay guys, so don't kill me, but I lost the footage of how to sew the back. And so I'll do my best uh, to explain using this shot on how I completed the top. I first finished the top and bottom edge of the bodice using the elastic trick I showed you in the previous video. So feel free to check out that video to see that trick. And then I sewed the front and back bodice together. Seems pretty easy, right? So here's the final look. This was obviously experimental and I didn't attach the sleeve to the bodice to allow my arms to reach to higher places, as well as I would have hand tacked the ruffles together to cover more of the gaps. But you know, a girl didn't have enough time. So you are welcome to do so. I also suggest that you do so if you plan on wearing this piece out and about, okay? So I'd like to thank those who have took the time to watch my videos and also subscribe to my channel. I also uh, welcome others to do the same and I truly appreciate it. It makes me want to keep doing these videos over and over again. So yes, man, thank you. I'll see you next time, okay? Thank you, bye.